Beloved in Christ, one of the things I find to be quite perplexing is how people understand the Father and the Son and other entities uh, that might be in the spirit realm. Because it seems like we have an issue or a problem with separating Jesus, the Son of God, from the Father in heaven. Look what Paul writes in Ephesians 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints, which are believers, which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Jesus Christ. Grace be to you, and peace from God, which is Yahweh, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus, which is Yeshua, of the Christ. And I don't see where the difficulty lies. That there is a Father, there is a Son, and there is the Holy Spirit of God. And yet, they operate as one. I believe that we have to get this right in our mind, in our very thought as believers, if we are going to grow fully in the faith. Paul addresses that question and brings an answer to it in the very beginning of his address to the uh, saints who are at Ephesus. We even have a problem with the fact that God calls believers saints. There are religions that believe that we ought to pray to saints, that there are something special, someone who has died and has been given sainthood by a denomination. And beloved, in Christ, this is faulty. This is teaching beyond what God says. Paul, with no issues at all, when he directed his address to the Ephesians as though they would not have a problem either with the truth. When he says to them, Grace be to you in peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus the Christ. Beloved in Christ, why is this important? when many people think uh, that it isn't. Because, beloved, we have to understand our rightful place, that we are in Christ Jesus, but we are not in the Father. We one day will live in New Jerusalem under the authority of the Son, which is Jesus the Christ. God the Father will never leave heaven in order to live with us on the earth. Beloved in Christ, it is so simple, but yet because of religion, we bring many times confusion to our own minds. And beloved in Christ, this ought not to be for born again believers. Because when we find ourselves questioning exactly who Jesus is, exactly who the Father is, then we find ourselves in a, a, a critical state in our thinking. And this is where Satan wants us to be. Because then we are putting uh, 
one might say the horse, the cart before the horse. And now we are actually working it and pushing it and that allows false uh, uh, teachings and false prophets to come in and uh, uh, delude and uh, uh, behoove many believers. And that's why I believe the Word of God says that we must understand. We get wisdom, but without understanding, wisdom is null and void. We must get understanding. So when we pray, how do we pray? Do we pray to Jesus or do we pray to the Father? Jesus said in the Word, and I'm going to get into that later on, that Jesus said, ask me nothing, but ask the Father, and he shall hear you and answer you. So that's why Jesus said, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Glory be to the living God. Beloved, there is a separation, and we have to understand it. So that way, when we pray, we can pray intelligently in the Spirit, and we will receive that which we pray for, that's in the will of the Father. Glory be to the living God. Beloved in Christ, I pray that God brings understanding to you in who He is, who His Son is, and the Holy Spirit of God who He is. Amen? Praise be to the living God. Beloved, may the Father open your heart to His understanding in the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ.